So, hello, my name is Dr. Nikola Milosevic, and I would like to welcome you to this course on malware analysis. So, the first lecture will be about malware topology, and we'll discuss uh, a bit more about that later. And what I want to say at the start of the course, uh, that this course will be based mainly on two books, uh, so you can either obtain them or basically uh, what I will be talking is kind of like inspired and uh, learned from these two books. So it's Malware Fighting Malicious Code by Ed uh, Skodo Skodis and Practical Malware Analysis by uh, Michael Sikorsky and uh, Andrew Honig. Uh, so it is kind of like recommended reading, but obviously you don't have to read it. Uh, the course is based on those two books. Uh, <clears throat> so let's dig into what is malware uh, straight from the beginning. So malware is basically short for malicious or malevolent software, and is basically software used or created by attackers to disrupt computer operation, gather sensitive information, or gain access to private computer systems. And there are obviously multiple uh, definition of malware. This is one. And here is as well the other one that is taken for for example from malware bytes uh, the malware or malicious software is blanket term for any kind of computer software with malicious intent most online threats are some form of malware so basically any kind of script or software that has malicious purpose uh, will be uh, some kind of malware. So there are like many kinds, many, many kinds of malware. And uh, that's as well like what we're going to talk today is about like topology of malware. Uh, so what different kinds of malware exists and existed during the history. Uh, so some of them are viruses, trojans, worms or ransomware and so on. So why is malware so important? Uh, there are reports that estimated uh, loss for businesses between 375 and 575 billion dollars per year. So this is all across the world, all across the businesses. Obviously, not one business would be able to take this huge loss. However, there is like huge market for malware criminals uh, where they making malware and basically are earning money uh, out of it. Uh, so and it's growing exponentially. So like if you look at the 2014, there were like 37 million unique malware samples in 2015 it's uh, 64 million uh, unique samples on the other hand there was like 4.2 billion attacks attempts uh, compared to 8.19 billion attacks and as well if you uh, look at the number of specimen uh, you you can see that it is growing pretty much either linearly or even exponentially uh, so it is growing market. It is hard to handle for the companies. So many threats, so many uh, attack vectors, so many kinds of malware, and they are as well like becoming more and more sophisticated. So there is a need, like huge need, to uh, develop prevention mechanism for malware. And as well, like malware quite often gets into news. So you, you have this, like, probably you heard around like 2014 15 uh, about Stuxnet, Stuxnet worm, and it was all around the news how uh, Iranian nuclear plant was, like, nuclear enrichment plant was infected by malware, and uh, which caused basically uh, the turbines to change speed in a way that at the end the turbine and exploded. Uh, as well, the other news that is kind of like more recent uh, is that the United States uh, announced in 2017 or 18, I'm not completely sure, that they reserve right to meet cyber attack with force, with basically conventional attack. Uh, and as well, like the, there are there have been attacks to health system and 
in the UK and many other places, but it's generally as everything is getting digitalized, uh, it is more and more important to secure those systems as uh, all the kind of like private data in healthcare and in all kind of like public administration, as well as all companies' data and all companies' record, records are kept in digital form, which is kind of interesting for malware developers to attack and penetrate those systems to obtain uh, this uh, data. Uh, so let's see basically what malicious actions are and what malware can do. So like some of it, it would uh, delete some sensitive configuration files from your hard drive, hard drive, and that would basically render your computer completely inoperable. And this could be done quite uh, sometimes for uh, some like kind of sabotage purposes or fun showing up, especially in the early days of malware, it was uh, quite often done uh, in this way. However, this is not the smartest way the malware would work. Uh, usually uh, malware wouldn't affect too much uh, operation of your uh, computer. However, it would, on the other hand, try to steal the data or use your computer for some kind of distributed denial of service or crypto mining <clears throat> uh, or ask some kind of ransom. So other kind of is infect your computer and use it as a jumping point to spread to all your friends' uh, computer. In some sense, like friends is... Uh, Friends is seen as a like network friends, so like all the computers that are connected to yours, or like friends in your uh, email address book, so it may send them emails with attached malware. Uh, as well, it can monitor keystrokes and let the attacker see everything you type. Uh, so uh, basically here attacker would be able to get your account details for pretty much every website that you're logging in including banking websites and therefore be able to steal your money uh, another set of the action is gather information about you your computational habits uh, the websites that you visit the time that you stay connected and so on so basically you can do this with keyloggers uh, as well, uh, some of the malwares were sending streaming video of your computer screen to attacker uh, and as well like grab video from an attached camera or audio from your microphone and send it to attacker across the network. It can as well execute attacker's commands. So if attacker wants to install some other tools on your machine and continue attack uh, in some other way, he can do it. He basically can. If malicious software is installed or certain kinds of malicious software is installed on your machine, uh, attack, attacker pretty much has the control of the machine as much as you do. Uh, so he can do basically everything that you can do. Uh, as well, he can steal files from your machine, especially sensitive ones containing personal, financial, and other sensitive information, and as well upload files into your system, such as additional malicious code, stolen data, pirated software, pornography, and so on. And as well, what is kind of dangerous it can frame you for a crime so it can execute attacks from your machines and then uh, investigation may be showing up the uh, the traces back towards your machine uh, so basically it will make all evidence of uh, caper committed by an attacker to appear to point to you uh, and he can conceal as well attacker activity on your system, masking his presence and basically hiding file processes and kind of network usage that he is doing. Uh, so how malware is basically uh, working quite often is that it uses 
data. It mixes data and code. So usually in the programs in this like P structure, you have data blocks and uh, code blocks. And basically data is readable, but usually you don't execute those bunches of uh, code. And, but however, computer is clueless and he executes everything line by line until he's told to stop. So attacker can insert code into your data and then somehow uh, change the direction of your code to uh, just continue executed it in a data segment. So if it's not validated, it can cause harm. And as well, the other problem is that sometimes softwares are extensible and it is kind of like modern architecture that uh, everything should be extensible and um, people could make plugins. However, those plugins can uh, be ex extended in a way that the author actually didn't uh, intend it. Uh, so... Yeah, like building blocks, like object-oriented programming can be uh, used in a way that certain actions would be rewritten and malicious actions would be uh, inserted into the code. So, so, and as well, like attacker can exploit uh, some like security to uh, gain market share and... Uh, well, this is like one one of the threats that like uh, quite often people like sacrifice security to gain market share, uh, which is quite often uh, with the platform. So like platform wants to have a biggest market share and therefore they make extensible platform that people can program for and as many people could use it uh, and, um, and, and build plugins and, uh, games and w whatever. However, someone can as well, like make, uh, some, some sort of like malicious plugin. Uh, and then like, um, over the time, uh, homogeneity of computer environment increased, which made it easier for attackers to target uh, pretty much all the machines with basically one code that is written, or like quite large number of like computers on the internet with single code. Uh, so, so we today have unprecedented connectivity. All the devices are pretty much on the internet, uh, kind of like even fridges and microwave are getting on the internet. And uh, therefore, that is like huge space of the machines that uh, people can utilize for some kind of like malicious purposes. Uh, and... Uh, users are and user base of those machines are pretty much clueless uh, so so they don't know really how to protect themselves uh, and what is important to know that the world is just not a friendly place uh, so here we have like one of the uh, one diagram that like shows that there is like increasing complexity of the malware over time uh, and as well it shows how during the history uh, those malwares were appearing uh, so types of malware there are like viruses, worms, trojans, malicious mobile code, backdoors, rootkits there are two kinds of rootkits, user level rootkit and kernel level rootkit ransomware and combination malware these are the most important ones. Uh, the most common malware are still uh, viruses. And the second place goes to Trojans. Uh, and then comes like backdoor swarms and uh, uh, so on, Trojans and so on and so forth. So uh, even though the viruses are probably the most simple kind of malware, they're still the most common one. And then like Trojans are as well, like one of the very common. So how Trojans work and how Trojans uh, are spreading is basically in two kinds. Like one, one is uh, 
well, actually three. Uh, so one, one is like companion viruses. And uh, basically, if you have in Windows uh, some, some application that is uh, ending with exe, you can make the same, you, you can name the application with the same name, uh, but with com extension. And if somebody executes a command without extension, it will uh, execute the com variation. And therefore, uh, in this case, malware will be executed instead of like non malicious, not bad. Uh, then there are like pre pending and post pending viruses. So, like pre pending uh, viruses uh, would take like target host file and basically pre pend itself. Uh, on top of it and then like make that their starting uh, start command uh, is basically executed first and first is malware executed and then the rest of the file. Post pending is kind of like opposite where uh, malware will basically put itself at the end of the uh, host target file and then uh, it will just insert the pointer to to itself at the beginning of uh, host file so it will execute the virus and then go back and execute the, the rest of the program uh, so what basically viruses would uh, target are this like file system the most common uh, files on the operating system so they are like common PE like portable executable files so they are like DLL sys and exe files uh, and they can as uh, they can attack basically master boot re record uh, patrician book, boot sex or, or any kind any place of the operating uh, system uh, so it can as well like uh, affect document files so like office uh, it has the scripting language which is called visual basic for application so anyone can write kind of like malicious code that would execute when you open the file or when you do certain thing with the file similar thing exists with autocad matlab and basically any kind of other scripting language tools uh, and uh, and, and as well, like quite often what can happen is that somebody would attack a programmer's machine uh, and then uh, try to insert malware in uncompiled code because it's kind of easier to just like insert their code and then wait for the programmer to just like compile the whole code. Uh, and as he starts distributing this code, obviously all the users would be compromised. Uh, <coughs> So how viruses would propagate, they can be uh, propagated through removable storage, so boot so sector of removable storages such as USB and floppy disks. It can be um, attachment in emails, so like downloads of this like attachment, and as well like shared directories and st stuff like that. Uh, so this is how um, infection of the boot sector works. So usually you would have boot bootstrap loader that will have like chain with system initialization and some other uh, further on uh, steps. Uh, however, like when you have infection, it will like prepend everything. Uh, and insert itself at the beginning and copy maybe bootstrap loader at some other location and then uh, have a pointer with, with this chain to bootstrap loader after it executes the virus code and then bootstrap lo loader will go into system initialization uh, so the the virus code will execute first uh, so how you defend yourself against viruses so one simple solution is antivirus it's called antivirus so you, you can put antivirus on workstation file servers mail servers application servers borderline firewalls and handlers so like mobile devices and they quite often um, 
Antivirus basically work uh, uh, mainly with signatures, so like patterns in files, and like, and quite often even uh, the the system would be scanned for the file, and all the file will be hashed. And if certain hash of executable file changes, that's a bad sign. That is sign that it's been inf infected. Uh, as well, there are like some heuristic. So this what I was saying about like changing the file hash is called integrity verification. There could be heuristics of like how the system uh, or how certain application acts, what system calls it calls, and if there is a particular sequence, uh, then it is called like malicious and uh, user is notified and that application is stopped with execution. Uh, and as well, like one of the main uh, uh, main ways to protect this configuration hardening, so like make your system uh, as sec configure your system as secure as possible, and especially this is true for the scripts. So like don't allow some scripts to be executed out of the blue. Uh, so. Uh, there are like a couple of things that can prevent uh, virus detection. So one is stealthing, uh, one is polymorphism and metamorphism, and antivirus deactivation. Uh, so stealthing is basically trying to uh, fig figure out how, how to hide uh, from the uh, anti-malware uh, apps. On the other hand, polymorphism is the process through which malicious code modifies its appearance to toward detection without actually changing its underlying functionality. So it would add certain commands and uh, stuff like that, change certain strings, change maybe some order of the commands, uh, but it would not change functionality, however its signature would change in this. Uh, so therefore, uh, anti-malware that is detecting this kind of malware with signature wouldn't work for it. And metamorphism takes the process of uh, mutating the specimen a step further by slightly changing the functionality of the virus as it spreads. So it would change the command and command order in a way that it basically change uh, its functionality. This is kind of like dangerous process for attackers as sometimes this change can make the virus to break and antivirus deactivation so like once the uh, is is basically attack where or, or like part of the execution of the virus where uh, the virus would uh, find antivirus running deactivate it and then install its malicious components uh, worms are another kind of uh, malware that basically would scan the network and automatically spread. So it can basically uh, infect vast amounts of machines and these machines could be used for different purposes. So it could be used for DDoS uh, attacks or other activities that uh, require some kind of like distributed system. So for example, crypto mining. So this is the diagram how it works. So like a computer infects with uh, some uh, malware, there is a penetration attack, and then like this computer starts scanning the network and then like attacks uh, other machines that are connected to that and spread. And then like it goes on and on and on until it spreads. Uh, so it basically has this uh, five components. Uh, like warhead is basically the the part that executes some sort of uh, exploit. So it can be uh, so, some sort of like buffer overflow, file sharing, email or messaging uh, exploits, or basically any kind of misconfiguration. Then it goes to propagation engine and that propagation engine will use some of the protocols to propagate to this machine. Then it will like uh, do, do some sort of like scanning and selecting target. 
so not all machines on the like or not all IP address would be accessible through that machines. However, some will, and those would be selected that are in the right system and stuff like that, and then like attacked and the payload would be put in place so so yeah like tar target is like using email addresses hosts network neighborhood dns queries and randomly selecting network host then like scanning engine would just like scan and payload is basically a chunk of code designed to implement some specific action on behalf of attacker so like uh, something like backdoor or some uh DDoS center some mathematical operations for uh, crypto mining. Uh, now, super worms are kind of worms that can infect multiple platforms or they can use multiple exploits. Uh, and quite often they would use zero day uh, exploits. So, zero day exploits are exploits that nobody knows about. They are like flow in the system that can be exploited and attack can be performed. However, manufacturer doesn't know about them and there is no available uh, patch or fix to the, that system. Uh, and th this is like one of the basically how, how it works so, so like worms enter some like target system there is like environment and worm is installed worm carries necessary environment elements so like programs library configuration settings and so so on uh, then it enters another uh, system so this is like with multiple with support for multiple environments and it adapts target uh, to the target system by including codes to functions in variety of different uh, terms uh, different environments and uh, as well like warm basically can as well like transforms its environment by downloading and installing new components required by the worm so, so some of the challenges for worms is that uh, crashing system like if you crash system if worm crashes the system that it is spreading to it will slow down the spread uh, and then like over exuberant uh, spread could congest networks so like uh, networks could be like network traffic could be too high so uh, packet start may start be dropping uh, as well like you you can make yourself target so if you attack someone there uh, if you don't write the proper target selection algorithm uh, the target selection algorithm may infect your machine as well and as well uh, it could be overwritten by other worm that uses same kind of exploit uh, okay, other kind of malware is mobile malicious code. Uh, it utilizes basically scripts in various applications that can be executed, so some, something like JavaScript for web browser, uh, Visual Basic for application for Office, uh, Java applets, ActiveX controls, Flash, and so on and so forth, uh, can be written and included in malicious apps, websites, and can be added to form formerly benign apps and uh, websites, for example, using cross-site scripting or uh, SQL injection. Uh, backdoors basically give access to the machine of the machine to the attacker uh, so it could be uh, it could use some of the attack like local escalation of privilege so it is like not uh, it is basically when a user has access to the local uh, machine already however it doesn't have certain privilege so it can ex escalate those privileges and then use them uh, remote execution of individual commands is uh, basically when backdoor gives a uh, remote execution of even individual commands as it says so like uh, attacker can send some of those individual commands over the network and they will get executed uh, remote command line access so 
attacker will get complete command line access to the machine and remote control of the graphical user interface. So like uh, in this kind of backdoor uh, attacker will get completely control of uh, user interface. Uh, so backdoor can be installed by gaining access through buffer overflow or through viruses, worms, malicious mobile code and basically other, uh, other malwares. Uh, as well, it can be used by Trojan by email or trick to click and install. You can check NetCat. So NetCat is uh, basically a toolkit that, like one of the functionality, will allow you to make some sort of uh, backdoors. Uh, so you can check how it works and uh, make some simple attack uh, of like between like two virtual machines. Uh, Auto Starter basically is a malware that attacker can configure system to do uh, to start some application, for example, like backdoors when system starts. Uh, and there are a number of like s s uh, setup files and folders such as Windows Start Menu Program Startups, or you can change uh, so something in WinInI, SystemInI, uh, WinIDINI, or ConfigSys, and therefore uh, those files would have a uh, configuration what actually starts uh, when the system starts and as well like changing relevant registries so for example HK, LM software, Microsoft, Windows current version, run services will basically if you add keys with the names of the application it will try to start those applications. Uh, Trojan horses are uh, basically common application of files that pretend to be, uh, well, are, are malware that pretend to be something else, that pretend to be a uh, non-malicious application. Uh, so basically it's like nice program and then there is a malicious code inserted into it with some wrapping tool and uh, you have resulting single program that is malicious. Uh, it may execute non-malicious action with, as well, like malicious ones, and may mimic some kind of like useful software and hide inside. Uh, so user level root kits are usually, uh, so they usually replace some system executables, primarily in Unix systems, such as su command, uh, login command, sshd, password, uh, and they, they are like binary replacement that provide some kind of like backdoor access uh, or binary replacement to hide the attacker and other tools for hiding that don't reply place other programs. Uh, and it can be basically like useful tools for the attacker. Uh, so uh, basically attacker can get some kind of like uh, local privilege, privilege escalation by running some Trojan login and rewriting the proper uh, proper login by uh, the login uh, file that doesn't require him to uh, have any password or any username and so on. It's like uh, these are like examples of uh, some like local privilege legislation uh, rootkits uh, with different kinds of like commands. So you can have a look at them. Uh, and uh, in Windows, uh, ba basically, like rootkits can as well like hide or uh, execute in uh, like three different techniques, or or even like four. So like use existing interface to insert malicious code between existing program function so uh, there, there's like fake Gina is using basically there is like Windows program that calls module uh, that sits in between this module can be replaced by attacker code and that that code will call uh, Windows module that is supposed to happen 
it can disable Windows file protection feature and overwrite files in, in on the hard drive. So Code Red was doing this. So there is like attacker's code that overwrites existing Windows program files, and as well like it can utilize DLL injection and AP hooking to manipulate running processes in memory. So AFX Windows uh, root kit was doing it. So it would inject code into Windows process running in memory. Uh, so yeah, th this is another example of fake Gina that basically was replacing this fake Gina DLL uh, that when login was calling and uh, this fake Gina uh, would ask uh, user for login and password. Uh, and then like write those username and passwords into into a file so somebody would be able to to read those and then like uh, rootkits can go for kernel and kernel controls uh, controls the following so like basically he processes thread control, interest process communication, memory control, file system, other hardware control, and interrupt control. And basically, kernel is uh, base of the operating system. And it's basically placed between like hardware and processes that the user executes. And uh, it provides all those functions. Therefore, like once somebody gets control over the kernel, it basically gets control over the system. It can hide the processes, hide the threads, uh, do perform inter-process communication, which other person can't see, can do some kind of like memory control, uh, can do like file system control, hide files or show some files and as well like do hardware control interrupt control and stuff like that uh, so basically what do they do is they lie to the user uh, and by and by doing that they hide effectively attacker and it is like very complex to create and they can hide files directories boards processes interactions and it's practically impossible to detect like even with the best uh, anti-malware software those anti-malware software once it, it is in uh, once the kernel is infected they are getting information from the kernel and therefore they are getting fake information and they can't um, they can't detect this kind of uh, malware so let's go into now history of uh, malware and history of like computer uh, so it all started like the very uh, first uh, kind of mention of something that will become later on um, malware uh, was in 1949 John von Neumann developed the theory of self-reproducing automations and then uh, like during the 80s, it started with Professor Leonard uh, M. Alderman employs the term computer vi virus for the first time in conversation with Fred Cohen. Uh, in 1982, there is like first Apple II virus. In 83, in November, Fred Cohen uh, presents the concept of a virus for the first time in his seminar for the implementation of the first functional uh, virus running on Unix uh, and uh, in 1986 Fred Cohen does a PhD thesis like computer viruses theory and experiments uh, and yeah like Cohen needed only eight hours to develop some kind of like virus and then, like, the first computer virus is, uh, well, PC virus, is Brain A. And mainly we'll be talking here about uh, PC viruses. Uh, and how, why it got named Brain is because it has it in... Um, in the in the text uh, that was inside uh, the virus uh, and as well like it was 
well signed with pretty much address and telephone numbers of the uh, of the creators so it would like the text that uh, could be found in, in the binary code would say like welcome to the dungeon 1986 Basil and Amjad uh, PFT limited brain computer services 730 Nizam block Alama Ibakal town Lahore Pakistan phone numbers beware of the virus contact us for vaccination and basically what this virus was doing it was uh, not really harming much it was uh, basically infecting uh, the boot sector of the floppy disks the ones like this and as well like w once the floppy disk is inserted it would infect the uh, boot sector of the drive and then like every uh, diskette that was uh, inserted in that computer would get infected as well uh, and it is interesting story because like we have this like address and apparently uh, these brothers Basil and Amja are still living and have a company on that address so it was kind of like their experiment for fun that they may basically did uh, because they were like uh, coming like Unix machines and they wanted to test uh, whether Unix mas machines are vulnerable and apparently they did uh, and as well like they wanted to show the world that it is not the best idea to move to those kind of machines uh, and then like other viruses followed like stone cascade uh, form omega omega was like making omega sign on the on Friday 13th uh, Michelangelo would delete all your files on Michelangelo's birthday V sign Walker and I can show you a couple of those I have here like some of the uh, viruses that wouldn't be that have stripped that their malicious part so you can see in this uh, tiny DOS box what's going on so we can run for example ambulance so it would have this like ambulance car running through your screen and putting some quite annoying uh, noises uh, there are some others for example uh, well, let's run eight. Would show you this on the screen. Suddenly, so, so these are all like DOS viruses, uh, and then like crash would basically crash your system in this way. So it's not too pleasant to see. However, you can't really. Stop. Yeah, you can't. Uh, so then, like flame would do this. Uh, then you can have uh, Mars would present you the picture of Mars surface. Um, then what is interesting are these like casino virus that would basically say what it will do that he just like destroyed your file allocation table on your disk however i have a copy in ram and i'm giving you last chance to restore your precious data so like if you restart the computer your dust your data will be lost forever your data depends on the game of jackpot and you have five credits so like five games that uh, you can play and if you win like three times pound signed uh, it will copy your data to your hard drive and until you restart the computer uh, it, it will be there and working well however once you restart the computer it will prompt you with this poker game a uh, uh, jackpot the game so we can play and see what will happen so two credits one credit and yeah we lost and it will even swear on you uh, 
And then, well, one of the interesting one was Walker that would walk around your screen like this. And yeah, we need to wait for him to come over a couple of times. Or well, he'll be walking around. Okay, so I can show you as well, like we sign would draw this on your screen, basically we sign. Uh, and then for example, delirium would shake your screen and make you into delirium. Okay, so that's it for now. And then like in 1992 was created this like mutation engine uh, or MTE uh, and it was like basically creating polymorph uh, viruses that were like very hard to detect. It was uh, thought like the creator was uh, uh, having a pseudonym Dark Avenger, it is uh, assumed that he was from Bulgaria. Uh, the next big thing uh, that happened in like early 90s was this like virus creation laboratory, which was basically first GUI tool where somebody can uh, create malware using basically selecting things in the menu and then like basically creating viruses by uh, compiling in uh, and then Windows came so the first Windows virus was WinWear and it was the first one that was capable of infecting uh, program executable files uh, it didn't do a big deal of damage however it was like first showcase that what, what it can do then like monkey was like infecting a master boot record uh, one half was like using polymorphism and it was like encrypting your hard drive uh, and therefore you would be losing data concept in 1985 was the first office uh, virus uh, and then like larue uh, was as well like was in 1986, Boza uh, in the 1986, and they, they would like uh, show something like this screen from time to time. And then like Maburg was like one of the the kind, kind of like widely spread Windows ma uh, malware for Windows 95. Uh, and it came in like two magazines, CDs that were distributed at the time uh, with like demos of the games and programs. So like War Games CD and PC PowerPlay CD. And it had like some kind of like show slow polymorphism. And after three months that your machine would be infected, it would start showing screen like this. Then, like, uh, there were, like, first email worms in 1998, so was this, like, happy 99. Uh, so, like, during this, well, this malware would, like, be attachment to the email that would say, like, happy new year, and had the attachment, which when you open, you get a screen with fireworks. However, what it does in the background would be it will collect your uh, contact list and as well, like, send them the same email. Uh, Melissa was microvirus, so it would... Uh, it, it, it would be basically like as well like send uh, kind of like random word file with uh, malware that is on your system to all your contacts and then like if they open it do the same love letter was like I'll sending a message I love you and then like for, for more detailed letter open the attachment however the attachment was basically malware that was as well like sending that email uh to a lot of people a lot of people would fall for this and then Anna Kurnikova was the malware that basically presented itself as a photo of Anna Kurnikova which was like relatively hot tennis player at the time uh however yeah like people 
didn't understand that that uh, attachment was not image, and sometimes uh, mal like anti malware software would block the opening of those attachments. So this was a time basically when uh, you could in the attachment send anything. Like now, uh, most of the uh, system prevents you for for sending scripts and stuff like that. However, at the time, you could, and a lot of people were calling IT supports and asking, like, okay, I understand that there is malware in it. Uh, I want it to be gone. However, I still want to see the photo of Anna Kurnikova. Then, like, me mail uh, was another. And then, like, real worms uh, came into play so like one of well first internet worm was morris worm which was made in the mit as a student project and uh basically the like morris was making the the malware wanted to count the number of computers on the internet however he made a bug on the on the internet the on the worm on the program that it was spreading both like back and forth uh, to the computer that it already visited and therefore it caused very very large like bottleneck in the network traffic at the time and almost crashed the internet and even like he got arrested in some like prison time for for that even though it was like not really intentional uh quadred was uh uh, one of the real, like, intentionally written uh, worms, so it didn't need a user interaction. It spread around the globe in practically a few hours. It was attacking vulnerability internet information service, and after 90 day, 19 days, it launched, uh, like, distributed denial of service attack against, like, White House and a couple of other uh, websites. So... This is basically how the scanning engine works. So, like, IP addresses have, like, four uh, bits that could have any number between uh, 0 and 255. Uh, so, so there are ba basically this many combinations. So, it ta it for computers, it doesn't take that much to iterate through this much number. However, like some of these addresses wouldn't have any computer that is accessible. The other would have some that are not the right operating systems or that are patched. However, some would be infected and then uh, the scanning will continue from them. Uh, then like NIMDA was email virus with attachment that affecting Windows 95, 8, uh, Millennium Edition, NT4 and 2000. So it was affecting internet information system using Unicode exploit and it would modify a website to offer downloaded on, downloading of infected files. Uh, so uh, so basically, um, it, it it was using like end user machines to scan the network, and basically it was able to reach behind the firewalls. So like if somebody would download the malware or something like that, it it would be behind the firewall, and therefore it would be able to attack the private network. And it was the first uh, worm that was able to do this. Uh, However, it had as well like bug that was uh, that would like crash it and uh, make it unable to spread. And then, like in two thousand three, was made the first malware that was spreading uh, in order to gain fi financial gain. So the f f father was first, and it was doing it by sending spam uh, and basically attachment that takes over the PC and send spams and as well uh you can see in like around year 2003 uh, the change of the landscape of malware creators so uh, before 2003 it was mainly developed countries while afterwards it started to be developing countries who were who are more seeking uh well, like financial game, while uh, people before that was doing it more for curiosity and for uh, learning. And as well, it was 
uh, change of the uh, authors. So, like in early days, like be be before two thousand three, it was mainly like young people, kind of like bankers doing it for fun. While after it, you have like serious cyber criminals and criminal organizations doing it and even sometimes like terrorist organization funding or, or people uh, doing this crime to fund terrorist actions uh, so then it got a bit dis destructive with like slapper and slammer so like slapper was spreading on september 13 2002 it was using open ssl vulnerability to spread and had backdoor that installed on port udp 2002 and it was mainly infecting linux also apache servers uh, slammer was attacking sql server it was never writing anything to hard drive and it was like generating quite a lot of traffic so what it made is like five out of 13 root name servers uh, on the internet were down therefore almost like half of the internet uh, kind of like suffered uh, blaster was like in august 2003 it was using buffer overflow in uh, decom uh, rpc and it was like doing uh, sin flood on windows update.com however microsoft already changed that website so it didn't affect much of this like update uh, it was writing to the user sometimes like one of the two messages is either uh, i just want to say i lo love you san so much and the other was bill gates why do you make this possible stop making money and fix your software then like Sasser in April 2004 used buffer overflow in uh, local security authority uh, subsystem service and basically was spreading over the network and was crashing uh, the machine in a minute so it would restart to show this countdown and there was like no way to stop it and then like once the patch was released uh, by Microsoft uh, uh, it, it basically was a race that like after, like if you're connected to the infected machine you would be pretty fast infected and then like you have a minute to uh, do whatever and if you're downloading the patch it could sometimes take more than a minute to download it and install it and therefore if it crashes you would have to do it over again so it was like very frustrating to, for some people and here are some like uh, things that those uh, malware kinds did so slammer for example stop uh, like there was a problems in air traffic controls in usa uh infected the nuclear power plant in ohio 911 fo phone service was down in seattle and bank of america atm network was down blaster on the other hand had uh, air canada flights grounded uh, csx a train stopped uh, New York uh, ESO power operator network was infected. Numerous RPC based SCADA networks were down, and some, several Windows based ATM uh, networks were infected. Sasser had rake up trains stopped in Australia, Delta flights problem, uh, delays with British Airways flight, Hong Kong government's Department of Energy networks was infected, uh, two hospitals in Sweden, EU Commission, Heathrow Airport, Coast Guard UK, and several banks were shutting down office because of internal uh, infection. So pretty serious uh, damages to like pretty core national infrastructure structures so here here it is like kind of like point where it got quite serious so here is like one note what had air canada on their websites that they were infected and uh they are getting things in order and then like root kits came like one of the first was made by sony uh, so sony bmg and they did it with intention to basically stop people pirating music uh, and it was like installed in the cds of like kelly mignon ricky martin and about like 50 more uh, titles and 
basically how it works is if you use it on some like CD player, it doesn't do anything. If you use it on a computer, it installs in the background the rootkit and it was a kernel based rootkit. Uh, and therefore kind of tries to detect if you try to rip that music. Uh, so it was like basically copyright pre prevention and it was quite effective because it would hide itself in and pretty much anything that is in uh, files and folders that starts with dollar or sys dollar. And therefore other malware writers started writing malware with file names such as this. Uh, so it was kind of like bad scandal uh, and especially it was like very poorly handled by Sony uh, because uh, like Thomas Hesse which was like president of global, global digital business in Sony BMG said that like most people don't know what the rootkit is and then like why should they care about it so it's kind of like very poorly poor statement like most people don't know what is brain tumor. Why should they care? Well, they should if you ha if they have it. Uh, so, so some other examples of rootkits were Mabroot uh, in 2008. So like it was using browser exploit and it was uh, mainly spread uh, through Monica Bellucci website. So it was um, kind of like hacked. Uh, it was in fact in master boot record hides as a rootkit and basically then like sends keystrokes to the attacker and as well it was like so uh, good that if it for some reason crashes it would send a trace to the attacker or the creator so he can debug and try to fix it uh, Configer as well in 2008 created a botnet. It was spreading using USB NS LAN, and about like 9 to 15 million machines were infected. However, that botnet was never actually used. Uh, ransomwares are basically malwares that would encrypt your drive and then like ask for money to be paid to a certain account for a code for. Uh, decryption and then like around like 2010 uh, governments entered the game and governments have quite a lot of resources to write malware so uh, they started writing some kind of like spyware keyloggers to use it for cyber espionage industrial espionage uh, German police release uh, in 2010 Trojan spyware uh, to like spy on suspects uh, and there was like kind of scandal around it but yeah like not a big deal and th then there were like some uh, attacks uh, made by like North Korea was alleged that uh, they attacked US and UK National Health Service in 2017 um, there was like several uh, uh, several reports of Russia and China use, using uh, malware to attack, and as well like as in 2014 there was attack by a UK surveillance agency like GCHQ on uh, Belgian telecom. Uh, so that was kind of like scandal because it was use of use of malware and espionage on basically ally, uh, and while the other attacks were kind of like kind of like hostile states, and then kind of like big game changer was in 2010 Stuxnet, and it was basically first malware that was intended for physical sabotage of industrial system and it spread over the USB and it used five exploit out of which at the day of discovery four of them were zero days uh, when it was discovered it already did what it was made for uh, so and, and as well like he had kind of like killed date uh, so on june 24 2012 it would just like delete itself and kill itself uh, 
and basically to do something PC has to be con con connected to a particular PLC that is connected to the particular industry so it had like very specific uh, setting which was actually the exact setting that Iran was using in nuclear enrichment plants so this is how it was working so uh, basically malicious computer worm was uh, propagating all around the world like uh, with this like USB sticks uh, and un until it reached at some point this like Natan's uh, facility which was like Iranian uh, nuclear enrichment plan uh, the vir virus was controlled from servers in Denmark in Malaysia with the help of two internet addresses with regards to false names, uh, which were registered to false name, and basically the virus infected about 100,000 computers around the world before it reached Natanz. Uh, so it was like spreading through the system until it finds the computers running Siemens control uh, software step 7 which is responsible for regulating the rotation speed of the centrifuges uh, the computer warms uh, varies the rotation speed of the centrifuge and this can basically destroy the centrifuges and uh, impair uranium enrichment uh, so the Stuxnet attack starts on June 2009, and from this point uh, on, the number of uh, inoperative centrifuges basically were in increasing quite sharply. So this is like how it. Uh, uh, this is the graph of like out of operation and in operation uh, centrifuges in this facility. Uh, and then afterwards, like a couple of other malware were built with a similar base as Stuxnet, so like Doku in September 2011. Uh, it was used for information retrieval and basically espionage, um, but has basically this kind of like rootkit capability similar, similar to Stuxnet. It was written in mainly in higher languages. It was believed that it was object-oriented C compiled with the Microsoft Visual Studio and as well like uh, Flame, but now this Flame is different than the Flame that I showed. Uh, was like from 2012. The other one was from 1980. I eight nine, uh, so so this one was as well like spreading over the USB LAN, and it could record audio, video, Skype call, network traffic, steal files like Office PDF text. It was about with all the modules twenty megabytes large, which is quite large for malware. Like malwares are usually a couple of kilobytes, uh, but it was modular, so attacker can add more modules as well. And it was written mainly in Lua and C++, remotely controlled and killed. So if somebody had the suspicious that they were discovered, they would kill themselves. And similar as Docu and Stacknet has a valid certificate. So that's it for now. This is this was the first lecture. And then like later on, we'll dug into uh, what kinds of analysis on the malware we can do. However, it is quite important that for start you know what kind of like malwares exist, what you can expect, uh, what basically they can do. So see you then on the next lectures.